Shilian asked. Is this your grave? Am I drinking your wine? He was a drunken mess and didn't really hear clearly if that ghost fire said anything. He just thought that the master of the grave was displeased, trying to chase him away. He grumbled, I get it, I'll go. Shilin hugged the wine jar and crawled up, swaying and wobbly as he took his steps. Yet, unexpectedly, he didn't get very far before he lost his footing and with a thud, he fell all over himself. It turns out there was a giant pit in this graveyard. It was probably pre-dug to prepare the burial of a deceased. However, the deceased hadn't yet been buried before Shillian himself came tumbling in. Shillian's forehead knocked on the outer edges of the pit and it hurt, worsening his dizziness, his head throbbing. He was woozy for a while before he struggled to get up, both his hands muddied and bloodied, with scrapes and cuts everywhere. He held out his hands and looked at them, without really registering anything, then tried to climb out of the pit. However, he had just downed an entire jar of wine. His limbs were limp. He couldn't exert any power, so while he attempted to climb out a few times, he'd slip down every time. Shillian fell to the bottom of the pit and glared at the hiding moon in the cloudy night sky for a bit, growing very angry. This pit wasn't even that deep, so why couldn't he climb up, no matter how he tried? The more he thought about it, the angrier he became, and he started mumbling in spite of himself. What the fuck? Shillian had never cursed before. This was the very first time such words came out of his mouth. But the curious thing was, after he cursed, the stifling tension in his chest seemed to have dispersed instantly. Thus, like a child who had tasted sweets, Shilin clung on to the side walls of the burial pit and used all his strength to yell with a deafening voice. God f***ing damn it. He slapped to the ground and yelled. Is anyone there? Is there anyone who can help pull me out? Of course, there wasn't anyone. There was only a small ball of haunting ghost fire, unceasingly blazing. After Shillian had fallen, that ball of ghost fire came rushing over, seeming to have wanted to grab him, but it could never make contact. Shillian didn't bother with it at all and said angrily, Someone might as well just come and bury me. Cursing as he will, he continued to climb. Kush, kush. Shillian finally climbed out using his own power, but he was already incredibly unkempt and he lay on the ground huffing, breathing laboriously. It took a brief moment before he flipped over, hugging himself and curled up. So cold, so cold, Shillian whispered. His voice was tiny, afraid that anyone would overhear. However, that ghost fire heard and it came flying pressing itself against his body, its flames suddenly much brighter than before, like it was burning itself up with all that it had. Still, a ghost fire was cold. No matter how close it pressed, no matter how it tried to burn itself to ashes, it would still not be able to bring a sliver of warmth to the living. In his days, Shillian seemed to have heard a tiny, feeble voice. That voice seemed so close yet far, like it was a dream, but not, and it cried in despair. God, please wait for me, just wait for me. Please give me a little more time. Let me, let me. Shillian wondered inwardly, God, is it calling for me? But even if it was praying to him, it'd be pointless. Even when he was a God, he couldn't do anything. Now that he wasn't a god, there was even less that he could do. Your Highness? Your Highness? Your Highness! It was Feng Xin's pushing that woke Shilian up. He blinked open his eyes laboriously and found that he was lying in a small alleyway. 
Feng Xin's face was hanging from above, and when he noticed that Shilin was awake, he finally let out a sigh of relief. But soon after, it was replaced with traces of anger. Your Highness, what's going on with you? Running off on your own for days without a word. If you don't come back soon, I won't be able to keep lying to their majesties any longer. Shilin slowly sat himself up. Days? When the word left his lips, he found his throat was dry, his voice hoarse, and his temple was throbbing, his head aching like it was going to split. He seemed to recall something, but at the same time couldn't exactly remember. Feng Xin crouched down by his side. That's right, two days. Just where did you go? Why were you running mad like that just now? Was he drunk for two days? Wasn't he at some wild graveyard? Why was he lying here? And judging from Feng Xin's tone, a sense of foreboding filled Shilian. What did I do? He asked. Feng Xin said gruffly, You were possessed, crashing stalls everywhere, beating people up. You even went up to stop the patrolling Yang An soldiers. I don't know what else you've done before that. When Shilian heard that he even went to stop Yang An soldiers, he was taken aback. I went to stop the soldiers. Then, what happened to those soldiers? Thank goodness I bumped into you and stopped you, Feng Xin replied. And you look like this, so they thought you must be some crazy drunkard. They only yelled at you, but didn't bother. Otherwise you'd be dead for sure. Just what happened to you? Why does it look like you drank? Shilin looked down at himself, and he was covered from head to toe with mud and grime. He scratched his head, and it was also messy, like a criminal who was about to be dragged down to be interrogated and executed. He certainly did appear very much like a crazy drunkard who slept on the streets all day. After a moment of silence, Shilin crawled to his feet and replied vaguely, Hmm, I drank a bit. Feng Xin couldn't wrap his head around this. Huh? How can you drink? Just how much did you drink? To be drunk for two days. Seeing Feng Xin's look of disbelief, Shilin was irritated for no good reason, and he walked on ahead. I already said I didn't drink much, just a bit. Nothing's up. Why can't I drink? Feng Xin hadn't expected him to answer like this, and was stunned for a moment. Then he chased after him. What do you mean, nothing's up? Why? Has your highness forgotten? Drinking breaks the mandate. You can't break any mandates, otherwise how will you cultivate? You have to ascend again. The moment he heard cultivation and ascension, Shilin didn't want to listen anymore, and he quickened his pace. Feng Xin called out, Your Highness! He caught up again, and after a moment's hesitation, he tried. Did something happen? Tell me. Hearing Feng Xin question so carefully, Shilin opened and closed his mouth, wanting to speak, but not able to. If he didn't tell anyone soon, he might just break down, but he also wasn't sure how Feng Xin would react if he told him. He didn't dare to gamble. Seeing him distracted, Feng Xin added, For real, it's not like you killed or robbed, so what can't your highness tell me? Hearing, it's not like you killed or robbed, Shilin instantly felt suffocated. If it could be said that he might have been stirred, that he might have felt a little relieved, then at this moment, everything was thoroughly shattered. Shilin lowered his head and turned to keep walking. He replied hazily, It's nothing. Just, I'm really tired. You... He was just about to make up an excuse, and he stopped in his step. What's with your face? he asked. Feng Xin felt his cheek, then seemed to have touched somewhere that hurt, and his muscles tensed. The thing on his face was a gash, and one of his arms was also wrapped in bandages, layered and tied neatly and attentively. It couldn't have been Feng Xin himself who wrapped those bandages, but what Shilin was concerned with were the injuries underneath the dressing. How did you get hurt? 
With Feng Xin's abilities, no mortals could easily harm him, and it was his arm that was injured too. Feng Xin didn't seem to care. Oh, it's nothing. Just some thugs trying to crash the business, that's all. Xilin was shocked and baffled. Those local street performers from the other day? Yeah, them, Feng Xin replied. Why did they go crash your show? Xilin questioned. But then he understood afterward. Was it because we admitted defeat that day, but then you still went to bask, so they came to chase you out? That was pretty much the whole story. After learning the reason, a sudden rage exploded in Shillian's chest. Don't go anymore, Shillian said, his voice hard. However, Feng Xin brushed him off. Who cares about them? I'll go whether they like it or not. The one who admitted defeat was you, not me. I didn't admit defeat so it doesn't count as going back on my word. I'm going to set up shop there and bask no matter what. Besides crashing the show sneakily, what else can they do to me? I wasn't prepared this time, but I will be next time. If it comes to fists, I'm not scared of them. Hearing this, the sudden wave of rage that rushed to Shelian's head instantly dissipated, and it was replaced with guilt. Feng Xin had been like this while he himself was depressed and wallowing in misery. How could he possibly face this loyal servant that still hadn't abandoned him when things had reached this point? Having thought this, Xilin sighed. I'm sorry, Feng Xin. Feng Xin was taken aback, then waved his hand widely. Why is your highness apologizing to me? What rubbish. You're out earning money all by yourself these past couple of days. Sorry for your trouble, Shilin said. As long as you focus on your cultivation and ascend again soon, it'll be worth it, Feng Xin replied. The word ascend came up again, and Shilin nodded his head heavily. The king and the queen believed Feng Xin's lies and thought that Shilin had spent the past couple of days out training. When they saw him return, the queen happily cooked a meal, as always. Shilin didn't have the heart, so he took Feng Xin's bowl over and helped him eat it. He didn't sleep that night. The next day, Feng Xin rose and left bright and early in the morning while Shilin remained to cultivate. However, while he had already pulled himself together and gathered all of his energy, he still couldn't focus. Everyone should know this logic. The only way to stand out from the crowd was to study hard. Practice makes perfect. But who in a million could truly work to the point of practice makes perfect? By that same logic, no matter how much he told himself to clear his mind, how could he possibly achieve it just because he told himself to? For the next 10 consecutive days, the progress of his cultivation was at a standstill. Nothing was achieved and Shilin couldn't help but be anxious. Especially since every night, when Feng Xin dragged his exhausted body back, and he and the queen asked if Shilin had made any progress, Shilin could feel an inexplicable, immense pressure. He didn't dare tell the truth, so he could only vaguely answer that yes, there was progress, and so Feng Xin and the queen were both very happy. Still, things couldn't go on like this. After two months, Shilin could no longer allow things to continue the way that they were. One day, when Feng Xin returned in the deep night, the two were eating leftovers from the day before at the table. As they ate, Shilin suddenly turned to him. I'm afraid I'll have to leave for a period of time. Feng Xin was taken aback as he stuffed his face with rice. Huh? Leave? Where are you going? Shilin said slowly, I'm going to go search for a quiet land filled with spiritual energy and close myself off to cultivate. If a cultivation place was abundant in spiritual energy, then it was significantly beneficial to the cultivator. Before, Shilin couldn't make up his mind on whether he should leave his parents and two attendants behind, which was why he never parted from them. Now, he changed his mind. Feng Xin didn't think too much about it, however. Great, your highness, you should have done this a long time ago. 
quiet cultivation is the most effective, after all. Shelian nodded, paused, then said, I'll have to trouble you to look after father and mother while I'm gone. Fengxin was about to respond, but he suddenly hesitated for a moment. Although it was but a flash, Shelly knew him so well. How could he have not noticed that moment of hesitation? Fengxin was about to respond. Right then, the king bellowed from within the back room. If you must go, then go. This king doesn't need anyone to look after him. Fengxin and Shelian lowered their bowls and chopsticks and looked to the room. It seemed the king hadn't yet rested and heard their exchange, interrupting their conversation. Shelian shook his head and whispered, acting tough again. Fengxin smiled then said, Don't worry, your highness. Of course, I'll look after them. Now he answered so straightforwardly. Still, Shilin didn't forget that before Feng Xin answered, there was that small moment of hesitation, like he had other concerns. However, when he thought about it, maybe he saw wrong. Other than them, Feng Xin didn't know anyone else. He had no other dependents, so what other concerns could he have? So Shilin stopped thinking and changed his mind to considerations for his departure the next day. The next day, Shilin carried a simple satchel and temporarily bid farewell to his parents and Feng Xin. He walked for who knew how many miles, eating and sleeping out in the open for days. He then finally found a place, a quiet, deep mountain that was perfect for quiet cultivation. After examining the area, Shilin was startled at first, but soon after, his heart was filled with joy. Such luck, the feng shui of this land is excellent. I've actually found a most auspicious piece of land. Having been unfortunate up to this point, to have his luck turn so suddenly, Shilin still couldn't believe it. He had to check and recheck before he was absolutely sure. Indeed, this area was a sacred land, brimming with spiritual energy. If he could immerse himself and focus on cultivation for the next few months, then surely he could achieve twice the results with half the effort and make exponential progress. It was as if Shilin had seen hope and the gloomy feelings of recent days suddenly cleared, his heart leaping with joy. Father, mother, Feng Xin, wait for me. I'll return very soon. Following along the steep and perilous mountain path, and hiking for seven to eight hours, Shilin finally entered the deep recesses of the spiritual mountain before sunset. Crossing through the dense forests, he could sense clearly that he was coming closer and closer to the source of the spiritual energy. Shilin's steps were also growing faster and lighter. Yet, unexpectedly, just as he was picking out a location for his quiet cultivation, there suddenly came the clamoring noise of footsteps behind him. How could there be so many feet in such a secluded mountain? Shilin looked over unconsciously. He had never expected that with this glance, the smile hanging off his lips would freeze. Behind him appeared a number of people, about 30 of them, all different in shapes and sizes, donned in various attire. However, the one thing they all had in common was that they were all heavenly officials. A small number of them were officials without rank in the upper court, and the majority of them were the officials of the lower court. Amongst them were those junior officials that had bumped into his failed robbery the last time. When they saw Shilian, their faces changed, and they tugged and elbowed each other, saying something under their breath. As for Shilian, when he saw them, immediately his hands started to tremble. Both parties stared at each other. It was a brief moment before one of the heavenly officials cleared his throat. What a coincidence that we'd run into your royal highness here. Indeed, why has your royal highness come here too? Shilian inclined his head lightly, forcing himself to be calm 
and composed, then responded without any sign of inferiority. I'm here to train. Even though the hymn of today wasn't the hymn of the past, still, she didn't try to use the same tone before he was banished, refusing to allow himself to sound subservient or guilty. The heavenly official smiled. Even more of a coincidence, we've also come to train. Yeah, yeah, who knew that we'd all run into each other here? It turns out Shilin wasn't the only one who'd spotted the suspicious land. This group of heavenly officials had also targeted it. Having run into the situation, Shilin started hesitating. Would he have to cultivate alongside this many heavenly officials? To be honest, he rejected the idea of cultivating with other heavenly officials from the bottom of his heart. First, he had come to close himself off to cultivate quietly. If he couldn't be by himself and had to be with so many people, then there'd no doubt be disturbances. Some people enjoyed cultivation in groups so they could take care of one another, but Shilin had always cultivated quietly on his own. Second, ever since that robbery incident, he became ill at ease when he saw heavenly officials he had been acquainted with in the past, feeling like the eyes of the others were piercing like needles, tormenting him. Just like right now, he had the delusional feeling that they were all watching him with judgment, so he wouldn't be able to focus on cultivation at all. When it came to taking over auspicious lands, there was a first come first served rule. As long as Shilin was strong enough, he could very well say that he was there first. Please go and find somewhere else to train. However, those few junior officials who bumped into his robbery incident were right before him, so he couldn't act too tough. Besides, it would also be thuggish of him to chase away so many heavenly officials while keeping the auspicious land for himself. Even if Shilian didn't want to train next to the other heavenly officials, there was no other choice. There wasn't any time to go find another place with such plentiful spiritual energy, so Shilian could only nod. Yeah, what a coincidence, he responded. Then I'll head in first. My lords, please do as you will. Then he made a move to leave in haste so he could go hide himself in the quietest cave. Yet unexpectedly, just as he turned around, a heavenly official behind him spoke up. Shilian paused in his step and turned his head back, puzzled. What is it? Those thirty or so heavenly officials exchanged looks with one another, some whispering. A moment later, someone stepped out and he smiled. Your Highness has taken over a number of auspicious lands in the past. Why don't you let us have this one, this time? Shilian was stunned for a good while before he understood. What they meant was to have him leave this place. How baffling. What bullies. A rush of blood came charging up to his head, and Shilian thought angrily. I was here first, but I didn't ask you all to leave. So why did you all turn around and try to have me leave? But he didn't dare act out. After a moment of silence, the hand holding the strap of his satchel slowly clutched harder. Shilian demanded, his voice hard. My lords, what is the meaning of this? One of the heavenly officials said, Well, didn't we just say, Your Highness had taken over quite a number of auspicious lands in the past. Shilian cut him off. What does it have to do with us? Are you saying that, since I've taken a number of spiritual lands in the past, I'm now barred from cultivating in spiritual lands? That heavenly official was stumped and stopped talking, looking embarrassed. Shilin tried to remain composed and said, Also, I don't quite understand. It's not like everyone can't cultivate here just because I'm here too. Isn't it common to share spiritual lands when cultivating? What's wrong if everyone just minds themselves? Why must you ask me to leave? Just then, he heard someone grumble. Stop playing ignorant. There's already 30-something of us. 
If you're cultivating here, what more can the others cultivate? Although that man was instantly pushed down by the others, Shailen still instantly understood. So that was it. The spiritual energy in a piece of a spacious land was very limited. When cultivating, if someone took over half, then the others who came afterward could only share the other half. If someone took over eight parts of it, then the others could only take two. The stronger one's ability to absorb spiritual energy to use for oneself, the less spiritual energy there'd be for others to use. Those heavenly officials were afraid that, if he was also around to cultivate, he'd take away the majority of the spiritual energy. What was left would have to be shared amongst the 30 of them, so there wouldn't be much left for everyone. Having realized this, that boiling blood in Shillian's head was charging even more aggressively. He clenched his fists and said coldly, I will cultivate here. Another heavenly official spoke up. Your Highness, we're only willing to call you Your Highness, out of respect. You're nothing more than a mortal right now, so why must you fight with us over the spiritual land? Since I'm a mortal and you're all heavenly officials, then what are you afraid of if I'm here to train? Shillian said. If I don't leave, are you going to chase me away forcefully? Of course, that wasn't feasible. If a mortal did not commit any major sins, then heavenly officials were not allowed to use force against them, lest they be punished. The heavenly officials really couldn't do anything to him. However, Shillian forgot one thing. Just as he was stubbornly facing those 30-something heavenly officials, a voice suddenly said, Your Highness, has been banished to the mortal realm. Your backbone's grown much tougher. Not only would you rob mortals, you'd even offend heavenly officials. <laughs> Hearing this, it was as if Shelian suddenly plunged into an ice cellar. He whipped his head up and saw the one who spoke was an insignificant, lower-ranking official. But he wasn't one of the heavenly officials who had caught him red-handed at the robbery incident that day. As he suspected, they had already talked. It wasn't all in Shillian's head earlier. Everyone really was looking at him with an inexplicable eye. Everyone knew. All of these heavenly officials, they all knew. In an instant, Shillian felt as if all of his bones were pulled out, the flames burning in his veins extinguished, his eyes red, filled with blood. He stiffly looked over to those junior officials. He croaked. You said you wouldn't tell anyone.